Great. Baker Mayfield and the Rams get an upset win on Thursday Night Football. Does Baker have any dynasty value going forward? All that and more in this episode of Locked on Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked on Dynasty Football, part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Network. Thank you for tuning in. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. I am Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. She is Kate Magic. Follow her on Twitter at FF Ball Blast. Kate, how are you doing on this fine Friday morning? I like, I feel like I'm coming off a high, Marcus. We just saw what might have been one of my favorite ends to a football game of all time. Like, honest to God, that was an incredible feat. For those of you that did not watch this game live, I would encourage you to go get your NFL Plus subscription, which is like the worst subscription service ever. Go subscribe. Just killing just to, potential sponsors with Shirk. Yes. <laughs> just to re just to rewatch this game. Like I'm I mean, I'm I'm funneling users here. Um, I, I just I don't think that there's anything that would have prepared me for the roller coaster that was Raiders Rams. And Marcus, you led with it to open up the show. It all stems back to Baker Mayfield and the incredible, incredible comeback that he led this team to. I, I don't think anybody saw it coming. No, I mean, Baker Mayfield to do what he did on such short notice uh, was very impressive. Led two As touchdowns. For- yeah, two <laughs> touchdown drives at the end of the game. Um, even before the touchdown drives, Kate, I got to be honest, I, I, I thought he played – about as well as you can expect. He had some incredible throws over the middle of the field. He was running. He was playing confident. I I just want to caution people. I, I'm not going to make any big sweeping, you know, statements about Baker after one Thursday night game against a really bad Raiders defense that I don't want to talk about. But mm-hmm. I I think this is a good spot for him to play for the next four games or so. Maybe come back next year, be in a backup role. I just think it's a good fit for Baker long-term. I think it's a great fit for Baker long-term. We saw what he was able to accomplish with a competent coach in Cleveland and a lot of his struggles. I'm still going to point back to the fact that his shoulder was like falling off guys. Like, and he just continued to play and it was probably to his detriment that he continued to play because he didn't look great when he was playing injured then he goes to the, the Carolina Panthers, who I don't think uh, offer anybody a real fair assessment of competency uh, with the the offense they're running, with the uh, coaching staff in place. Like this like relationship or potential relationship with Sean McVay, I feel like it's a really interesting fit. And I mean... It, there's no ruling out that Matthew Stafford could consider retirement. Like it's pure speculation at this point, but back to back concussions, concussions. It's not even the concussion. Spinal, it's, yeah. It's a spinal, a spinal cord. contusion. Yeah. It's a bruised spinal cord. And, and that's scary. That's uh, the injury that ended Ryan Chazier's career. Like there's, there's no ruling out that, Matthew Stafford could decide to walk away from football. And if he does, I, I honestly think this pairing with Baker Mayfield could be exactly what both sides need. Yeah. Um, again, just Let's talk about it from dynasty perspective though. Cause that's the right. part. I, I'm just not going to get over my skis here, right? Like it was a fun performance. I'm happy for Baker. I think this was awesome, but <laughs> It's one game on a Thursday night football against a defense that probably didn't prepare for him. Honestly, like how could you prepare for Baker? Because he signed like two days before the game. Um, And then Rams barely prepared for Baker. And and, and remember this offense for the Rams was pretty atrocious until the final two drives of the game. They scored three points and there was a lot of 
<laughs> a lot of bad football. Uh, and now I know the talent around Baker this game was bad, but I think whatever you thought going into this game about Baker long term, you should probably continue to think that. I just don't think one game changes much. That's all. So here's here's my perspective. And obviously, I'm a huge Baker Mayfield fan, always have been. But I've always been realistic about his uh, prospects for fantasy, right? He's not like we saw yesterday uh, on Thursday Night Football. We saw some of that mobility. We saw his ability to uh, deliver the ball on the move, which was fantastic. We know he's tough, but he has never finished a season higher than QB 16. He's been a quarterback one in just 24% of his career games for fantasy football. Marcus, I'm going to drop the most insane Baker Mayfield stat you're going to hear today. He has just seven career games with 25 or more fantasy points. Yeah. For context, Baker Mayfield, or sorry, Patrick Mahomes has seven this season, this yeah. season, like Baker Mayfield, as fun a story as it is, as much as I love Baker Mayfield personally, I'm not buying in for fantasy. I think this is a perfect time if you just kind of got him as a like he's just been clogging up your roster. This is the time to sell him for literally anything you can get. I, I 100% agree. Um, anybody else in the Rams? I I do want to say I thought Tutu Atwell looked pretty decent yesterday. Five for 50 on nine targets. Um, I I don't know if he really has any long term value, but I just it's notable that it seems like he's finally finally getting to be a bigger part of the offense. Um, we can talk about Cam Akers and Kyron Williams if you would like to, but that's really all the thoughts I have on the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, I I want to talk about Kyron Williams real quick because I I think he's a really interesting prospect. I like I think he's a guy that could potentially be a do-it-all guy for the Rams moving forward. Cam Akers um, just has not been efficient whatsoever. Kyron Williams leads the team right now in yards per carry, um, leads the team in run success rate. I, I think he's capable of being that guy that you want him to. And I think he's kind of a value right now, Marcus. Consensus ranking right now on Dynasty League Football has him as RB60. RB60. That feels a little too low, right? It feels low. He's currently sitting behind names like Isaiah Spiller, Naeem Hines, Chase Edmonds. Naeem like, Hines, get out of here. For, for a guy who is, like, I think, looking better than really anybody else in this offense right now on the ground, um, you know, I don't know if it's maybe his 465 40 yard dash that uh, has, you know, nailed him to the butt. And I don't, I, that's a new expression that I'm starting <laughs> for dynasty terms. But um, I, I don't know if that is like holding people back. But I, I think Kyron Williams, his game speed looks faster than a 465. I do think that he's, um, he's capable of making plays. So I think he's a really interesting buy in dynasty. And I wouldn't have guessed that his, his draft uh, capital was so low. Kyron Williams for two 2023 fourth rounders. Yeah, like yeah. give me Kyron I, I, Williams all day. I hope over the final four games that we see Sean McVay just lean into Kyron Williams more just to get a look, right? Just, just to find out for sure. Only got three carries in this game. Looked good when he was on the field. Um, it would just be nice to at least see the Rams experiment and see what they have in Kyra Williams, because I agree with you. Like he's just so cheap right now. Why not go out and trade a late draft pick for the chance of getting maybe a starting running back in a hopefully good offense down the road. Right. And I, I'm not saying that I think Kyron Williams is like going to be a perennial RB one. He's like not going to be a that, Josh Jacobs, right? He's never going to be a Josh Jacobs, but I do think he could be one of these guys that like, maybe he's not a weekly start, but he's going to have the opportunity moving forward that he could be in consideration for a weekly flex play. If he gets the opportunity and maybe like, you a really Kenneth don't Gainwell, have to, right? I, my hopes for Kyron Williams are a bit higher than what we've seen from Kenny Gainwell so far, but I, I, I think that's a fair enough assessment. All right. 
Uh, let's talk about the Raiders, but we want to let you know that this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Unfortunately, life doesn't come with a user manual. Man, that would be great, wouldn't it? Uh, so it's, when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Therapists are trained to help you figure out the cause of challenging emotions and learn productive coping skills, which makes therapy the closest thing to a guided tour of the complex engine called you. BetterHelp has connected over 3 million people with licensed therapists. It's convenient, secure, and accessible anywhere, 100% online. Everyone deserves to feel their best. BetterHelp makes it easy to get started. As the world's largest therapy service, they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. All the benefits of in-person therapy, plus it's more convenient, more accessible, and more affordable. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to match you with a therapist. If things aren't clicking with that therapist, you can easily switch anytime for absolutely any reason. It couldn't be any simpler. No waiting rooms, no traffic, no endless searching for the right therapist. Get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. That is betterhelp.com slash locked on. All right, Kate, let's talk about the Raiders side of things. If you're forcing me, um, Derek Carr, 11 <laughs> for 20, 137 yards, no touchdowns, two interceptions. He played dreadful in this game. But the story is Josh Jacobs, 27 carries. He had 18 carries in the first half, 99 yards and a touchdown. He also added in two catches for 15 yards in the passing game. I mean, he said sort of RB won the rest of the way. I mean, going forward. Do you trust that he's going to continue to have this type of production in 2023 and beyond? Absolutely. Um, Cause it's not even that, uh, you know, he's like kind of, you know, let's look back at 2021, right? Najee Harris top five running back largely due to volume. Josh Jacobs is far and away from that narrative. It's not a volume based RB one performance. He truly looks like an all pro running back. And um, I, I think he has earned himself a monster contract moving forward. Marcus, like, tell me if I'm off track here, but like this team clearly has absolutely zero intention of re-signing Josh Jacobs to a long-term deal with the way that they're using him. I, 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 I mean, agree. 18 carries in the first half, uh, absolutely mind numbing. And, you know, I, you've been pretty high on uh, Amir Abdullah as this team's backup running back. Kind of interesting that like, it, you know, we saw him leave with a, uh, a broken finger and we still really couldn't get all that much out of Amir Abdullah. Uh, and it, really nobody else got a ton of opportunity. We saw Zamir White get um, a little bit of work, and once he had a, a god awful run into his own offensive line, like that was kind of the end of the Zamir White story. It it was let's bring in the guy with the broken finger and and continue to run him into the ground. I'm not banking that he's coming back to this team, so mm. let's look at the the dynasty landscape, right? Because Josh Jacobs, a guy that had a lot of, uh, you know, loss, a lot of value loss this off season sitting at like RB 15. Where would you like to see Josh Jacobs land? Just kind of really quickly. Is there like a, other than the Raiders, assuming he goes somewhere else, because I've got a couple fits and I, I want your thoughts. It, oh man. Are you Marcus. ready? I'll, I'll give you some names. Are you, you start ready? off. Yeah. Carolina. I, I hate that because I don't want to see him go to an organization that is not fantastic. I want to see better for him. So. Arizona. Um, don't Plays mind that. James Connor. Don't mind that. Yeah, I like that. Chargers. Ooh. Um, with Austin Eckler. I don't think they will be willing to make that financial investment i like i think josh jacobs price tag is going to be a little bit too high for this team um bills would love would yeah. absolutely love I, I would suggest miami but we've already told 
them that they're signing Tony Pollard this off season, right? Yes, we they've run with that suggestion. I don't think that's <laughs> I don't think that's going to be within the realm of possibility. Uh, what about Atlanta? If they don't re-sign Cordero Patterson, obviously they're not going to be in the market for Tony Pollard, considering he's going to be a Miami Dolphin. Um, I think that could be an interesting fit with new QB one Desmond Ritter. Um, you know it, th that offense. Imagine Desmond Ritter. Uh, imagine Josh Jacobs, Kyle Pitts, Drake London. Mm. That would be a powerhouse that I'm going to tune in to watch every single week very eagerly. I got one for you. What about okay. the Baltimore Ravens? Ooh. That physical um, running style, downhill. Does I, I think that's an interesting one, but Marcus, does that mean you are out on J.K. Dobbins? Yeah, probably. <laughs> J.K. Dobbins in the most recent batch of Dynasty ADP sitting at RB24. 24 that is behind Khalil Herbert behind Tony Pollard um just ahead of Leonard Fournette who is hey, we're in year three of JK Dobbins like he's got one more year left on his rookie contract after this season yeah it's yeah. tough uh yeah so let's talk about Zemir White uh got three carries for nine yards in this game the Raiders used the 122nd second pick in the draft on him by the way it's in Go check it out yeah. on Google. Uh, what do you think about Zamir White and his chances to take over this backfield next year? I love Zamir White. And the, like, honest to goodness, I think the only reason why I've been hesitant to invest heavily in Zamir White is uh, injury concerns. He's suffered a torn ACL in yeah. each knee. Not fantastic. But despite that, I mean, he is a phenomenal phenomenal athlete he's so explosive mm -hmm. um you know the vision not necessarily quite there yet but i think we've seen enough spark from him and i think he has all of the physical traits he's a bigger back to six foot 214 pounds like he's he's got the size he's got the speed um ran a four four at at that size I, like legit explosiveness as a running back. And I think they love he can be a well. home. Sorry. Can you repeat that? They love him in Las Vegas. Love, love, love him. So I'm, I'm all really in on, buy. he's a very sneaky buy right now. I think, um, you know, before we continue to hear more about that narrative that Josh Jacobs is not going to return, go by Samir white. Cause I, I, I do think that, um, all of the traits are there. I think, you know, as long as they're going to have other playmakers in this offense, um, he's not going to measure up to a Josh Jacobs, but every, every trait that you would want for him to have to be successful and create his own plays is right there in front of you. All right. Okay. Let's do some promotion commotion. But before we do that, we want to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by prize picks. Price Picks is daily fantasy made easy. It's so easy to play. All you have to do is pick two to five players, and if they score more or less in their Price Pick projection, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. No competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Price Picks offers projections on any sport that you watch. This includes NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, Men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, esports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, and more. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. They are currently operational in over 30 states and in Canada. Download the Price Pick app or go to pricepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with promo code locked on. If you deposit 100, Price picks will give you 100. If you deposit 50, they'll give you 50. It's it's really that easy. Don't forget to enter promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. All right, Kate. Best time of the, the week promotion commotion. Who are you promoting either from your bench to your starting lineup or maybe even from free agency see, into your starting lineup this week? All right. I'm going to roll with Kendall Hinton this week in oh, uh, that's leagues a where. One. I know. I'm sorry to start. I should have started off. I, I had another name, but I, I uh, wanted to start this off with a bang. 
Uh, Kendall Hinton, uh, wide receiver for the Denver Broncos. Cortland Sutton, two straight DNPs with a hamstring injury. Yeah, like I have to assume there's no way in the world he's actually going to play. Um, but in the last four games, he's played at least 77% of offensive snaps. He ranks third among wide receivers in this team in routes run. Uh, like not, not a great stat sheet performance uh, at any point this year, but the opportunity I think is going to be there. And the Kansas State Chiefs rank fourth in fantasy points allowed to wide receivers. They allow a, a lot of upside, right? Like mm-hmm. Christian Kirk, 105 receiving yards, two touchdowns. Josh Palmer, 106 receiving yards, two touchdowns. Um, like whether it be a one-off touchdown that gets him some fantasy points or he gets there simply on volume, I think there's a good shot for some production there this week. I, I've got two guys, both play for the Houston Texans. Oh, no. Uh, first, if you absolutely need a running back, I kind of like Rex Burkhead this week. Um, when Davis Mills played early in the season, Burkhead just got peppered with targets. Uh, starting the season off, five catches, two catches, four catches, five catches, two catches, five catches. He's back. He's healthy. This game at least projects as a kind of one-sided game with the Cowboys taking a lead. That could mean a lot of opportunities for Rex Burkhead in the passing game. I also like Philip Dorsett a little bit. The Cowboys struggle with speed. Tutu Atwell, uh, at the beginning of the season, had a big play against them. Ashton Doolin had a couple of big plays last week. No Nico Collins this week. Likely no Brandon Cooks as well. I think Philip Dorsett is a uh, what-the-heck flex this week on a team that might have to throw the ball 40 or 50 times. I don't actually hate that. Um, Still always gross to put like any stock in the Houston Texans. Like nobody, nobody wants to uh, subject your lineups to that. Um, Another much less gross name, but somebody that I feel like we're still not really considering a viable flex play on a weekly basis. Um, What about say Jones? Who's been, kind of killing it uh has seen seven or more targets in uh five or sorry four of the last six games uh, now gets the titans who they've struggled to uh, cover in the secondary i think this could be um an interesting place for this team to match up you have it just depends uh, on who's that quarterback right like it if, does if trevor lawrence it, isn't playing i'm a lot less excited about zay jones it absolutely for sure. Um, but I, I still think regardless of who's at quarterback, I, I'm willing, uh, if I'm in a place with six teams on by, I think Zay Jones is getting enough playing time. He's running enough routes. He's integrated enough in this offense. And Marcus, this team is not going to be able to run on the Tennessee Titans. Like the, they have been one of the most, underrated rushing defenses this season. I think they're going to need to air it out regardless of who's at quarterback. Like this could be a pure volume play, but the, the, the matchup is right. Uh, last one for me. Um, I kind of like Matt Breda a little bit this week against the Eagles. Ooh. Saquon Barkley dealing with a neck injury that caused him to miss practice on Thursday. He also just hasn't looked all that good the last couple of weeks. So maybe the giants hold him out. Um, or maybe they just limit his touches. Matt Breda is just a pretty nice NFL player, knows this offense. Wouldn't be surprised if he gets 10 to 12 touches this week. So if you're you're cooked at running back and you need somebody who is going to play that has some big play potential, kind of like Matt Breda a little bit. I I don't hate it. Uh, it'll give you heartburn. Yeah, I mean, well, at the least. You might need a little Pepto uh, once you set your lineup, but I'm I'm... I think you got to do what you got to do in week Yeah, four, you got to just survive. <laughs> Last week before the play, playoffs start in most leagues, just survive any way that you can, especially, Kate, with six teams on bye this week. Some of our yeah. lineups are going to look really, really gross, especially if you just didn't play anybody from Thursday night because you thought you know, that game was going to be really ugly, which it was. Uh, yeah. Listen, don't don't be afraid to start somebody like Matt Breda. Uh, all right. 
That is it for today's show. Thank you for making Lockdown Dynasty your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All the same places that you download the Lockdown Dynasty podcast. Uh, you can follow Kate on Twitter at FFBallBlast. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher. We'll be back next week to break down all Dynasty news and have – Recap week 14. Kate, I don't know if you knew this or not, but do you know that Saturday football starts next week? We've got three games on Saturday. It's going to be fun, Marcus. I uh, take no days off. We don't need, we don't need days off. We need, we need more football every single day. So our poor wives are not going to see us at all over the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, Luckily, luckily my wife works for the NFL. So at least we're in it together. At least we're in it together. Yeah. All right. Enjoy 14, everybody. We'll see you guys right back here on Monday.